All right, this lecture is going to be on the basic uh, Unix command find. This is a very powerful tool for finding and performing actions on uh, files and directories. So we've already seen this command, actually. Uh, if you recall, we used it uh, to demonstrate how to redirect to st uh, the standard error to, to nothing. And I'll just go ahead and uh, show you that one more time. But if we, we I think we used uh, find um, starting in the root directory, anything named with the name GNU plot in it, and uh, we're going to print it and redirect any standard error to device null. That gets rid of all the permission denied things. And uh, so there you can see anything with GNU plot and it's being printed to the screen. I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. So we have already used this, um, I'm, but although you know we kind of did it blindly with, uh, without really d describing the structure of the find command. So uh, the first thing in, in the find command is the directory in which we want to find it, or the path list. And this can be multiple uh, paths that you want to search for. It does search recursively, so it'll search for all directories uh, there, in this case home, and, and all directories inside of home. You can uh, specify the depth of the recursiveness by using a, an option um, max depth. So if you only wanted it to search in home, you could set max depth to 1. If you wanted to search in home and all directories within home, but not directories within those directories, then you would set that to 2. Okay, So that's kind of how that works. Uh, the second part is the selection criterion, so uh, in this case we're going to use a criterion based on the name. Uh, in this case we're going to look for all files called index.html, um, but there are many other selection criteria, and I have a table on the next slide that shows you um, uh, a few of those. Of course, I'll direct you to the man page for the full listing. But uh, then the, finally, uh, the, the action is print. And so far, that's all we've done with find is just print it to the uh, screen. Um, by the way, on a Linux machine, you can omit print. The default is print. So that's why I think in the past we probably didn't use that. So uh, when we combine this with um, other options, though, specifically execute uh, is when we find the real power in find. So just a, a fuller list of selection criterion. Um, a couple that uh, you know we we may really use would be uh, of course name here um, type we can use this to specify you know files or directories or symbolic links that we may be looking for uh, I name is another one that's important because sometimes uh, you know Unix is case sensitive and sometimes we want to ignore the the case. Um, so we can also use it to uh, you know again this is not the full listing. I'll direct you to the man page. There's other, uh, you know, you can you can search based on access time and other things. Um, the actions that we can use are uh, print, uh, so that's basically what we've been doing. Um, we can also ls, so we can list the output uh, of of any, you know, say directories that are found or whatever. Um, probably the most powerful are the last two, where um, we can execute a Unix command. Or uh, OK is just like execute, except it, it, it's an interactive. So it asks you for permission before performing the action uh, on the files that are found. Um, there's a couple of operators we can use. And I'm going to show some examples here in a second. Uh, but uh, we, can, we can negate anything. Uh, so if we use the, um, you know, if we use the, the exclamation point, that will negate any uh, operation. So in this case, we'll, this uh, command would select all but the C program files. Um, of course, we can use wildcards in our search criterion as well. Uh, there's also OR and AND app uh, operators. Uh, the syntax gets a little bit clunky when we use these OR and AND operators uh, be because we have to surround them in these escaped parentheses. But uh, it's not that big a deal. Just makes uh, the command line a little longer. But let's go over and do a couple examples here. Again, we showed you the 
the GNU plot one, but let's do something, you know, progressively more interesting here. So, uh, you know, I'll first show you a different selection criterion other than name. Um, for instance, we could say search our home directory for directories in this case, so not files, so we'll use a type D directories that have uh, a permission set 777. So that would be read, write, and execute for user group and others. Um, we may want to uh, we we may want to uh, you know check our permissions to, uh, over our file system or something. So this would print out uh, any directories that have the permission set uh, 777. So. In my case, there's only one of uh, the shared directory that I have set there. Uh, of course, there's many directories in my home directory, but uh, the only one that has that permission set is uh, shared. So, and we can, of course, see that um, if we look at, uh, if we change print to ls, then we can actually uh, see the, the long listing there and see the output uh, that, that shows the permission settings. And you can verify, in fact, that is true. Okay. Um, another thing we might want to do is, um, you know, find files in our home directory that are, you know, so I'll use the type file because I want to look for files that have uh, been accessed, you know, some time ago. Uh, so uh, maybe, you know, I'll say 20 days ago. Um, and uh, then we could use OK as the command uh, that, you know, an interactive execute to move those files. Uh, the, the, the braces there will represent, a, you know, a placeholder in the move command uh, where find will insert uh, the output of the, of the findings. Uh, so we could then move those to, say, some new directory called old. So this would be useful. Uh, and by the way, any execute command we have to terminate with uh, this uh, backslash um, colon, or I'm sorry, forward slash colon. So uh, this would move any old files to a folder called old and do it interactively. So if I hit enter, it's going to search my home directory for old files that have been accessed. And so you can see there, and I'm, I'm not actually going to move these, so I'm going to answer these no. But you can see how it's searching through finding the old files. So, and then I'm just going to go ahead and quit that. But you can, this would be a useful tool to, say, move some you know old files into an archive folder, or perhaps um, purge them completely by removing them. So, uh, I'm going to switch back over to my uh, local machine to kind of show you, uh, you know, maybe some actual something a real application for what you'd use this for. So here I have a, this is a LaTeX file, LaTeX file, that actually uh, used to create the very notes that you're looking at. And of course, uh, if you're familiar with LaTeX, then we can produce the, the file, the PDF, by running PTF LaTeX on this source file. And it runs through and produces a whole bunch of files, okay? Now, the only really file we care about in there is, is the PDF file. Um, you know, that's, that's the one I upload to the document. And everything else is kind of superfluous uh, intermediate uh, d documents. And of course, I don't even really care about the PDF if I can recreate it with uh, just the, the .tech file. So that's the one, the only one I really need to save. So I could uh, actually use find to help me uh, remove all, everything else in that directory. And I could actually, by going up one directory, I could uh, use this command to, you know, uh, step into many, many files and clean up a whole file system uh, and only preserve, you know, say, the .tech files. So what, the one way I would do that is I could say find in, in this directory here. Um, I'm going to actually have to use... Uh, uh, the, the escaped parentheses here because what I'm going to say is type file because I, I don't want to remove directories. I only want to remove files. So in this case, I'm going to use and. So I'm looking for types that are of file and 
don't have the name, so in this case I'm going to use the negate operator, don't have the name star dot tick, okay? And then I'm going to finish that and execute remove. Actually, I'm not going to use execute. I'm going to use OK. I want to do the first one interactively. Remove uh, whatever shows up there. So if we run this, uh, you, and I, then I, give, you know, it finds the first file. Yes, I want to remove that. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, now you see it stepped into the figs folder there, and it's, it's wanting to remove that ls.png. I actually don't want to remove that, so I'm going to hit no, and we're going to go back to this command, and I can prevent it from stepping into figs by changing the max depth to 1. And now if we run it, it will not step in. It should, it, since I removed everything else, it should only, uh, it should return basically without doing anything. And if you look what's in the directory now, it's just the, the basic commands find.tech. So let's go ahead and regenerate all those files and by using PDF LaTeX again. Okay, so there are all the files. And this time I'm going to not do it interactively. So I'm going to change OK to EXEC for execute. And then I'll run this. And then you see all that's left is the basic commands.find. So what I could do is go up one directory where I have many, uh, you know, all of these folders basically represent one of those lectures and inside it is a collection of the tech files. So then I could go in here, change the max depth to 2, and run this and it would clean up all of those directories, removing all everything except the doc tech files. Uh, so it's just, a, um, this would be a, a useful way to clean up a directory structure. So I hope you gave, some, gave you some ideas about how to use find. Of course, it's much, much more powerful than, than what I've shown you here, but this is just a basic introduction.